Back to Hello Nigeria. It's time for us to go to our first stop story. Today we're looking at the benefits of breastfeeding for mother and child. So if you're a mother, an intending mother, or a father, or an intending father, or in this day and age, a baby mama or a baby mama to be, <laughs> then this conversation is for you. We have the founders of the Milk Booster. On my immediate left, we have Dr. Chinenye Obiwane. Thank you very much for joining Thank us. Thank you very much. And on my extreme left, we have Chibweze Obiwane. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. Thank you very much. So both of you are the founders of the Milk Booster. My first question is, what is your business with regards to milk as a man? Usually we <sighs> think, oh, it's the woman. It's a woman thing because the woman is the carrier of the milk. Why were you interested in starting the Milk Booster? Okay, so after she gave birth and she had challenges with, you know, with breastfeeding and, you know, like a lot of struggle, I saw her go through that phase and she, you know, she came out from that phase on, on skirt and I was telling her, we need to do more for more Nigerian women. And this is how I landed inside though. And we need to mention that that is not her husband, by the way. That's her brother. <laughs> so her but, brother saw the challenge and decided to do something about it. But that's her. really good though. That's yeah. really good. What were the challenges that you faced? Because my sister gave birth a year ago and she also had some serious challenges with breastfeeding. So for me, like, I had issues from the beginning because my baby was a bit sick. So she had to be in NICU and then my milk was not coming out. And then finally when it came out, it was very insufficient it was not enough for her she would cry no matter what i was doing i was never producing enough so all i had to do was just to find what can i do so my mom came with pap came with different things i had to eat and i was like i don't have to eat this and the pap is not, i've been drinking pap and nothing is happening so i had to come up with other solutions you know to get that milk and feed her and make sure she's gaining the adequate amount of weight so that was how it came about. And uh, we know that you're one that is an advocate for a very long duration of breastfeeding. You know, I've been to one of your milk booster conferences and I, when I was hearing the things they were saying there, before that time, you know, I just thought to myself, baby, whenever you come in the future, I'm going to breastfeed you for three months and you're going to leave and be very happy because <laughs> I was breastfed for three months and I didn't turn out quite badly, did I? No, you didn't. Okay, so <laughs> how long did you end up breastfeeding your child? Are you even still breastfeeding? Yeah, she's still yes, breastfeeding. Yes, ah. I'm still breastfeeding. And she's going to be two in two months' time. <laughs> so, yes, she's still I'm still breastfeeding, breastfeeding my third life. Are you scared? Um, no, I'm just... I'm... <laughs> wait, 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 wait. She's, she's about to turn two. Yeah, she's yes. about to turn two, yeah. Okay, I really want to know why. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so breastfeeding and the breast milk is still beneficial for your toddler, not just for an infant. So, and it goes a long way because... As your toddler, they get sick as well. So if you're breastfeeding and your child is sick, your body produces like a lot more antibodies to help fight the infection, and then they get like they they get better quick quicker than if they didn't have that opportunity. And then it still helps with their brain development. Most of the brain growth happens within the first two years of life. So you still need that amount of milk. Your baby still need all that milk to that age because the longer they are, they are breastfed, the more the benefits that extend to adulthood, you know, they get it. So when your child is breastfed up to toddler age, that obesity is reduced as an adult, diabetes, cardiac problems, like the more they are having lower risk. And then as well, like for your baby girl, you're reducing her risk of breast cancer the longer you're breastfeeding. And for me as a mom, like, I'm breastfeeding for two years. I'm reducing the risk of breast cancer, ovarian cancer, all those, you know, female reproductive cancers that women are susceptible to. Now, this is a very challenging conversation because now from the perspective of a man, I would think that there's always this battle at some point for, you know, who owns that part of the woman's body between the baby and the father. So you find that the man, that I've, I've seen situations where in marriages, the woman still wants to breastfeed her child for longer, but the husband is saying to her, why do you want to continue? This child is grown up. This child is almost one. You need to stop. And I find that I think women get addicted to breastfeeding at some point and they've, they've built a bond with a child that they don't want to let go of. Chibu, as a man yourself, how would you be able to convince other men on the need to allow their wives? What would you think are some of the reasons that, you know, how would you convince another man really to allow his child breastfeed a lot more longer than they would have initially intended? Okay, so I think for us, there's a misinformation that the breast is to be sexualized that you know you know is that part of a woman's body that for whatever reason but the breast is actually food for the baby it, it, it is actually food for the baby so we are trying to change that whole concept because it's all in the mindset if they start to understand there's nothing inside it it's just tissues and it produces food <laughs> wow I, I i like that you're mentioning that yeah. as a man 
But I know that that would be an argument for another day. Yes, and that's why we're just out there trying to change. Okay, now, um, like, um, we are even encouraging dads to come on board for, the co for, for all the conferences that we're trying to have because it's going to be a session to educate them and it's going to be like changing all the concepts they've had about breastfeeding because if they start to understand the advantages that are attached to a woman doing this, they will have that, they'll, they'll be very much so open to it that, okay, come on, go and do it. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Now, some people cannot breastfeed at all. Some people don't actually get the opportunity. They just cannot produce milk and therefore they use formula. What are your views on formula? And do you think that formula also carries the nutrients that the child needs? Or is the child being deprived of something if they don't have the natural milk breast, breast milk? Sorry. Wow. <laughs> okay. So first off, like, it's only about 5% of women that are actually not able to not that they can't produce nothing, but they cannot produce sufficient milk. So these are side mothers that had like breast cancer and had to have double mastectomy. So other than that, many women are able to produce milk, just that we don't have the knowledge that we need to be able to get through the hurdles that come with breastfeeding because yes, there are a lot of hurdles and it varies with different women. So for those ones that cannot produce sufficient milk, I always advise if the mom cannot provide milk for the baby, the next best option is a donor milk. Donor milk is when another woman donates milk. So there are proper ways like that the milks are pasteurized and then given to another baby. Aside from that, so, this, so it's for mother's breast milk, expressed milk for mother, donor milk from another mom, before formula. Why is that? So because the benefits of breast milk outweighs whatever the formula companies can come, come up with. So for many years, if you go through the history of formula companies, you find that when we found that there was nucleotides in breast milk, they really created a huge wave around it, and everything was like just promoting nucleotides that added to formula. At the end of the day, the nucleotides in formula are not the same, comp they're not the same way, they don't respond the same way for why it, compared to the one in breast milk. So when you find that Formula is okay, but it does not have even half of what is in breast milk. Breast milk has stem cells, have living cells, have antibodies. Those yeah. things are not manufactured. They can't be produced in a factory. So that's why we have to exhaust all these options before we come to formula. Because at the end of the day, breast milk remains the best. All right, so yeah. Chibu, let's talk about some of the lifestyle habits that can prevent a woman from... Um, producing sufficient breast milk for her children, for her baby. Okay, so here in Nigeria, um, you know, recently, you know, the Minister of Labor, he actually, he increased the... the Duration for maternity leave. Yes, to four leave. months. And that was a very welcome de development because I find out that um, due to the work schedule in Nigeria, and it affects supply. You know, some moms don't have, you know, conducive environment at work for them to be able to express milk. So the duration from when they go to work to when they come back from work, being in traffic and all of those things, it affects their supply. And then some there is this, um, okay, okay, there is this myth that you have to eat more to be able to breastfeed more. That is, is not true. You just have to eat what your body needs. Because, you know, you know, I usually tell them this, that a breastfeeding mom that is able to pump milk and able to, to, to have milk available for her, for her baby is like a gym that is not going to the gym. She is burning calories at the same time. I mean, it's a classic time. example. Yeah, though. this is a classic example. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so she's like a gym that is not going to the gym. So she's just having food for her baby, and she's also maintaining a healthy lifestyle. I think since you've already started the conversation about myths surrounding breastfeeding, let's jump on it. What are some other myths surrounding breastfeeding? I've heard people say stuff like, I don't want to breastfeed my child because I don't want my breast to sag. Is it true? And what are the other myths surrounding breastfeeding that you can remember? So the one about sagging is a very sensitive thing, and I find many moms, like, it's something they're always holding dear to themselves. But the truth is that even if you choose not to breastfeed, your breast will still sag. Yep. So fine, a lot of it has to come from our genes. So if you have, like, if you're coming from a gene, a gene that has very perky breasts and they go all the way to 50, you're good. But if you're coming from somewhere that is just the normal, anything up has to come down at a point, it <laughs> has happened. So the thing is that during pregnancy, like they, normally our breasts are filled up with fat cells. 
you know, they're keeping it perky. But during pregnancy, the glands now that are going to produce milk for your baby are increasing in number, they're increasing in size. So they kind of push those fat cells out, kind of reducing them, do you understand? So when you find out that you finish breastfeeding and those glandular cells have to reduce now because they're no longer producing milk, you don't have as much fat as you had before to keep that pecky shape. So the fats do come back maybe in six months time, but because of that change has been done, it can really reverse back to exactly the way it was. So even if you choose to breastfeed or not, the damage starts with pregnancy, not breastfeeding. Interesting. Now, one great stigmatization that we see is public breastfeeding. A lot of people seem to have a problem with it, and that is mostly based on the fact that a woman's breasts are way too sexualized, like you mentioned, and they are actually not sexual objects. What are your views on public breastfeeding, the both of you? And also, do we need to make our environment more conducive for mothers to public breastfeed? So I, I really love the whole change now on social media. Mothers are coming out more because before they were really intimidated. The fact that people are looking at them while they are nursing their child, judge, like judgmental eyes at them. You know, when you have a baby that is crying, what else can you do but to nurse your baby? So I don't, I, don't, I don't understand the way people look at it, but it's been a struggle for some mothers. Some mothers are still not able to come out. And most of it comes from our culture, from our mindset, the fact that we know the breast is like a sexual organ, like the way they've made it in the society. So we don't really think about it first as a nursing mm -hmm. organ, like something that is to nurse your young baby. So when you're balancing it, so which one is more important? Your baby's nutrition is more important than the whole sexual aspect that we do. So the primary aim of the mammary glands, which are the breasts, are to nurse your baby. Mm -hmm. Then secondary aim is the sexualizing part. So we need to really kind of put our priorities in the right place. And what are your, what are your views on it as a man? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so it, it, it still boils down to changing the whole you know, mindset about it, like she said. Because um, you know, a lot more people are saying, why don't you cover up? You know, why don't you have a cover? But I, I, you know, you know, I try to, to counter it by asking them, if you're hungry and, and then you walk into a fast food, do you wear clothes to cover yourself while eating? So why do you expect a baby that is hungry at, you know, at the time? You, you, you expect the mom, and especially in Nigeria where you know we have some very seriously hot weather, and the weather is hot and the baby is crying, and you want to cover the baby, that baby will not even agree in the first place. And then if it's a situation whereby the mom um, is uh, she's, she's experiencing some issues with her baby latching on, no. It's so going to be a disaster. It's going to be a disaster. So, you know, my view on it is that, first, the breasts are for the baby. Then everything is secondary. Mm. It's so, like sometimes you just want to go out there and literally just be like, guys, it's just breasts, it's just nipples, <laughs> <laughs> calm down. It's just tissues inside yeah. and the baby needs to eat. There's food in there and the baby needs to eat. That's okay. All right. I'm glad that you mentioned this. There's so much that we need to talk about, but because we do not have enough time to discuss this, we know you've organized the conference, the World Breastfeeding Conference, and it happens every year. You have another edition this year. Yeah. Tell us about it. Okay, so we have the one for this year, starting on the 1st of August to 7th of August, which is usually the time frame for World Breastfeeding Week. And the theme of this year's one is um, Foundation of Life. We'll be discussing how breastfeeding is linked to poverty, you know, reduction, how breastfeeding can help, you know, your baby's nutrition and a, a whole lot of other things. Some moms will be discussing their challenges on breastfeeding, the most common challenges of breastfeeding in Nigeria, and we'll be discussing all that. We'll be having the first edition in Portacot on the 2nd of August, you know, Braithwaite Hospital, there will be a breastfeeding work as well, and we'll, we'll, we'll be having the second one on, on the 4th of August here in Lagos at um, Grand Junction Ballroom in Landmark Towers in VI, we will be having a breastfeeding work from somewhere in Legalia or in there to just show this is what we believe in, so that we're encouraging moms to come out in their dreams. We we'll have t-shirts available for Only everybody moms? to wear. It's Yo, everybody is, everybody's welcome. There's food, we're just gonna have a lot of fun that day. And then we'll be closing it up in Abuja on the 7th of August where moms too can come and then learn a lot about breastfeeding. Okay, you said that, sorry, just very quickly, a breastfeeding walk, right? Yes. What response are you trying to get from that, from the government? Okay. So there's really a lot that needs to be changed in Nigeria. So since I came back, I've been going to hospitals and 
you find that there is a huge gap in equipment, policy at work, organizations, like governments and, the, and all these companies don't know that if you really provide something for moms, you make them come to work and they will stay at work. So we need to change a lot of policy and maternity leaves in Nigeria. Very fantastic. All the way from Ireland, mm -hmm. you've come back to effects change in Nigeria. We are expecting to finally come back here. I don't know my <laughs> husband. <All right. laughs> you would think about that. But thank you so much for joining us here on yeah. Hello Nigeria. For more information, people can follow you on Instagram at what? At the milk booster underscore. All right. At yeah. the milk booster underscore is the handle to follow on Instagram. Yeah, for that's all my share right here. And all your <laughs> comments, you know, follow at the milk booster underscore. The event is free, so you can attend. You know, your, you, your friends, your loved ones, your family members in Abuja, in Lagos, and in Port Harcourt. And the, men, yes. it is just as important for you for to men. be there as your wives yes. or your baby mamas. Don't exactly. send them alone. <laughs> you need to be there, all right? So for more information, follow at the milk booster underscore. And we look forward to, you know, having a more receptive Nigeria towards the concept of breastfeeding and healthier babies in return. Thank you very much for joining Thank us. You yeah, so Thank much. you so much. All right. To enjoy more of this, our Ogunke videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.